Thank you very, thank you very much. Um, I'm just checking that you can see my presentation. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, Prof. Can you can you see my presentation? Yes, we can. Okay, that's perfect. Um, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank FAO and all the partners for inviting me um, to give this presentation to you this afternoon. I've been with you from this morning and it's been a very interesting um, couple of sessions, um, really interesting and I'm pleased that um, this topic is being highlighted um, at the FAO level. Um, I'd like to talk to you today about the work that EPO um, conducts in development of guidelines to assess the benefits and risks of non-Indigenous biological control agents for the EPO region. Um, just as some background, the EPO, the European and Mediterranean Plant Protection Organization, is one of 10 regional um, plant protection organizations throughout the world. We were created in 1951, have 52 member countries, including Europe, Mediterranean, and South Asian countries. We mainly work to support MPPOs, the National Plant Protection Organizations, of our member countries, and but also the conference authorities, and in particular for biological control. Um, um, not all MPPOs deal directly with biological control, so it might be the competent authority we're working with there in the member countries as well. EPO produces regional standards on phytosanitary regulations and plant protection products for um, a harmonized approach of methodologies throughout the reason and relevant to us today is the PM6 series of the safe use of biological control. All of the work of uh, in biological control is led by the EPO, IOBC, International Organization for Biological and Integrated Control, in a joint panel. Here at the Secretariat we coordinate um, and ensure that um, everything is published properly. But it really is the experts from across the EPO region that contribute and build um, the work in biological control that EPO conducts. The panel focuses um, um, with the majority of focus on safety of invertebrate biological control agents um, but our standards are encompassing for microbial organisms as well. Just as a um, little introduction, um, regulatory systems for um, invertebrate biological control agents, and here I focus on the EU. Um, invertebrate biocontrol is not covered by the current European um, regulations. Um, invertebrate biocontrol can fall um, within the scope of the EU regulation 1143-2014, the invasive species, and the plant health regulation 2016-2031. to um, But of course, these regulations um, cannot be used to assess the benefit and utilization of biological control agents um, within um, the EU. Um, some countries do have national legislation and others are developing the national legislation. Um, the map on the right hand side of the graph, you can see um, a map of 15 in yellow, um, 15 of the 27 EU member states that do have specific provisions for regarding vertebrate biological control agents in national legislation. Um, all of these countries require a risk assessment um, for the introduction of invertebrate biological control agents, um, in, um, non-indigenous um, biological control agents into um, their countries. This map comes from a um, very comprehensive report developed and published by the European Commission 
in 2022 detailing the current status of invertebrate, invertebrate biological control agents for use in plant health and plant protection. It's a very useful document and it is available freely online for those that will be interested. So as we can see, there still remains a lack of harmonization for um, regulatory systems of biological control throughout all 52 members of the EPO um, region, really. Some countries um, have national legislation, others do not. As biological control agents do not respect any national um, country borders, it's useful to have some harmonized guidelines um, for um, national authorities to use when regulating uh, the introduction of non-Indigenous biological control agents. So this is exactly what the EPO standards, PM6 standards aim to do. They aim to provide a framework for the um, um, competent authorities, MPPOs, to utilize when regulating and considering the use of biological control agents um, for the countries. We provide national, um, sorry, harmonized um, guidance um, for the region. In total, we have five um, standards within the biological control series. Four of them are looking at the process of utilization and adoption of use. And we have an, um, one um, standard which it looks at more technical aspect of the scientific um, host specificity testing of biological control agents. And um, I'll work us through um, all of these standards within the re remaining of my presentation. I apologize for the text, the amount of text on the next three slides, but um, I think it's um, important to detail. So the first standard that we have at EPO is PM61. It regards the first import of a non-Indigenous biological control um, agent for research under confined conditions. Importantly, the standard provides the applicant with a form and guidance to support an application for the first import of a non-Indigenous biological control agent. Also, it provides the national authority with guidance of how to evaluate the dossier for the application for the first import. As we can see on the right-hand side of the slide, we have 13 descriptions which would um, entail the notification. So the applicant should um, complete all of this information and submit it to the competent authority um, for permission to um, import a non-Indigenous biological control agent. Such aspects to include include the reason for research. Is it for a, um, a re-release? Is it for um, research purposes? Um, the description of the confinement facilities that will be utilized, are they up to the specified national standard for such research, et cetera, et cetera. I won't go into all of them. I think it's important for me to note while I remember all of the EPO standards are freely available online for utilization. Um, and so all of this information can be found in more detail within the standard itself. The second standard in the series is PM62, and this is the import and release of non-Indigenous biological control agents. It provides an application form and guidance on information of a research organization that a research organization should supply in a notification to the national authority and how the national authority can review and respond to the notification. Here on the right hand side, we can see it has three main components. Part one, the information of the applicant. Part two, the information on the biological control agent, the taxonomy, the ecology, the biology, where the biological control agent was first collected, where it is indigenous. And part three, information requirements for the intentional use of the biological control agent. It is part three that I will concentrate on in the next few slides, because part three is the, um, the information that constitutes the environmental risk assessment to evaluate um, the safety of the biological control agent um, within the, the dossier. And so within this standard, we provide detailed information of how the applicant 
um, should um, answer these questions and the information that should be supplied to satisfy the, um, the competent authority, the national competent authority um, for these um, following aspects. So if we look at the first one, the potential for establishment, um, the availability and utilization of suitable hosts are aspects that should be considered. The climatic similarities between the area of origin and the intended area of release. This could be from Kopp and Geiger um, um, climatic classifications, but it also can involve um, complex modeling as a similar to a model that you see on the right hand side there. It can be done with a number of different packages from um, um, Climax to um, R Studio. Um, information on the potential for um, cold tolerance over wintering for invertebrate biocontrol agents and other physiological behavioral mechanisms for, for, for surviving extreme conditions, e.g. current management practices, pesticides programs, potentially for establishment, um, competition and natural enemies can um, have an impact on the potential establishment. So answers to these questions should be provided in the risk assessment um, aspect for establishment. An important aspect of the safety of a um, non-indigenous biological control agent is the, um, the host specificity, the host range of the organism. And so we suggest, we provide guidance, we provide recommendations within the EPO standards. And so we suggest that um, non-target organisms tested by the scientific research organization should be um, included in the standard. The methodologies used, used to determine, first of all, the host range list, um, the number of species that you will test um, to deduce the, um, the host range, the host specificity of the organism, and the methodologies then for use um, with to assess the host specificity, whether that's um, um, choice tests, no choice tests, um, open field, closed field, um, cage tests. Um, just to point out the, the technical standard that I was talking about, um, which is is this one on the right hand side, which was recently published in 2023. It's a, um, it provides guidance to users on host specificity testing of non-indigenous classical biological control agents used against invasive alien plants. This was developed within the, the panel on biological control, but also um, we had to have, uh, we needed expertise from outside of the panel as well. So we were very happy that a number of expertise from across the region um, came together to develop this standard. So importantly, the evaluation of the host range, the host specificity of the intended biological control agent should be evaluated and assessed within the, um, within the environmental risk assessment. Spread, um, spread potential, how far the organism will spread by natural human assisted spread mechanisms is an important aspect to um, include. I should also note, that all of the EPA standards can be used for augmentative biological control, classical biological control, um, and in different circumstances within closed greenhouses, outside in the field. Um, and so the standards do encompass um, all of these aspects as well. So for example, for establishment, a prerequisite of um, classical biological control is the establishment of the organism in the natural environment for augmentative biological control, um, establishment outside um, and prolonged establishment is not um, a, um, a beneficial attribute of um, a augmentative biological control agent. Um, transfer also to non-target organisms is um, detailed within the spread um, potential as well. The potential to transfer to a non-target organism both via both natural and human assisted spread. Importantly, um, we need to um, assess the potential direct and indirect effects of the biological control agent. 
negative impacts on non-target species, whether that's um, weeds, whether, whether that's um, native plant species, or whether that's native um, invertebrate fauna, fauna. Um, effects on plants, um, possible effects on the biocontrol agent of the hosts, of the target plant and of the non-target plant, potential direct predation or parasitism of animals, arthropods or non-target species, competition or displacement of indigenous natural enemies, and potential for hybridization with the indigenous biodiversity um, in the intended area um, of release. In addition, it's important to look at the potential of negative impacts on habitats and ecosystem services, for example, provisioning, regulating, or supporting ecosystem services. Are there any potential impacts on the conservation value, for example, are there any potential um, negative impacts um, reported within the scientific evaluation or within the literature as well um, on um, rare or endangered species? Um, and a summary of any available information and it's noted within the EPO standard as well, such information might not be available or readily available on any potential hazards to human and animal health, for example, allergies, disease, vectoring, um, et cetera. So all of these aspects are um, the questions are asked, um, importantly, um, to uh, evaluate any direct or indirect effects. Potential benefits. Um, also, we have the section on um, where the um, scientific um, research organization um, should um, provide information on the potential and benefits of the biological control agent. And already this morning, um, we've highlighted a number of um, potential benefits of the biological control agents from increased crop yield to reduction in pesticide use. Um, and so all of this information should be incorporated into the, into the risk assessment. So then you can have a cost benefit evaluation um, of the um, benefits of the biological control agent. Um, one slide that I didn't include, um, importantly, at the end of the risk assessment section, um, we have evaluation of the uncertainties and an overall conclusion within the risk assessment process. It's important to detail um, the levels of uncertainty, especially associated with each of the individual components of the risk assessment, whether that's establishment or whether that's um, host specificity um, um, or direct or indirect impacts. So the, um, the EPO standard also requests um, that the users also detail quite clearly the uncertainty associated um, with the, um, the biological control agent and the overall conclusion of the risk assessment um, and the level, um, and yeah, the overall conclusion of the risk assessment. The EPO standard PM64, and I haven't forgotten PM63, I'll come to it in a minute. Um, the EPO standard PM64 is a decision support scheme for the import and release of biological control agents for plant pests. It sounds similar to that of PM62, but this is for the, um, the National Competent Authority for the MPPO to evaluate the information um, provided um, by the applicant for a release of a biological control agent to make a decision of whether there is a low risk and therefore a release should be recommended or there is a potential risk and the competent national competent authority decides not to um, release the biological control agent at that stage. Um, so, uh, like I've said, the scheme assesses the risk and benefits. It's universal for biological control agents, similar to all of the other EPO standards. It can be used for classical, commercial, augmentative, um, macro, micro, um, biocontrol agents, biological control agents of invasive alien plants and invertebrate pests. 
Um, the scheme consists of two sections, an express scheme, um, answers yes or no, um, yes to allow the release, and no to prohibit, and the full assessment as well, where there are some levels of uncertainty highlighted with the utilization of the express scheme, the full scheme um, should be used um, if for um, such um, circumstances and um, yeah, the full scheme should be used for any circumstances where there is a level of uncertainty or a level of potential risk. The final EPO standard that I think is important to highlight is the PM3, Biological Control Agents Safely Used in the EPO Region. This standard provides recommendations to EPO member countries on biological control agents for which a simplified procedure may be applied in, for import and release. And this is based on good experience, good practice. It includes, the standard includes an appendix with three lists. The first list is commercial, officially used, augmentative biological control agents. The second list is classical biological control agents established in the EPA region. And the third list is biological control agents that were formerly on the first and second list, um, but are no longer um, um, no longer have a recommendation for the um, simplified process procedure for use. The appendices of this standard are reviewed annually, and um, biological control agents can be included or omitted onto the third list. Um, based on the um, dossiers received and the expert opinions of the EPO um, Joint Panel on Biological Control Agent and by approval from the EPO Working Party on Phytosanitary Regulations. If you look at this figure on the right-hand side, we have criteria for listing of the biological control agents into one of the first two lists, augmentative or classical biological control. So for a classical biological control, um, first of all, importantly for both of the lists, augmentative or classical, um, there must be an absence of adverse effects of the biological control agent. And for a classical biological control, um, it is found for at least five years after release to be successfully established in part of or the whole of the EPO region. That's the criteria for a classical um, non-indigenous um, um, biological control agent. For an argument, augmentative biological control agent, the criteria is, is or has been commercially available or officially used and either Excuse indigenous. Me, My apologies for interrupting. You're sorry. running out of time. Okay. All right. One minute. Sure. One Thank minute. you. Indigenous and widespread in part of or the whole of the upper region, or established and widespread in the part of or the whole of the upper region, or has been used in at least five has been used for at least five years in at least five EPO countries. Finally, my last slide. Um, the standard includes 113 biological control agents commercially used, augmentative, 43 classical biological control agents. And a new um, addition this year is the, um, the um, Tamaraxia diary, um, a biological control of Troyosa eritrea, eritrea um, which is a important um, pest because it is a vector of Halong Bing. Um, and the criteria to um, release this, um, um, to include this biological control agent on the list was it's been found. It is present uh, for five years within the EPO um, region and there are no reports of adverse effects. I thank you for your attention and please do check out the links for any further information.